Hello and welcome to this training video for teachers and teaching assistants working with nursery and primary school age children who stammer. This video has been created by the Anaelin Bevan Speech and Language Therapy team and should not be copied or shared online or via social media. The aims of this session are for you to learn more about stammering, for you to understand how to support children who stammer, for you to know how to talk to children about stammering and for you to know where to find further information and resources. Our overall aims are for stammering never to become a problem for the child and if it's already a problem then for it to stop being a problem for the child and we want children to be confident and effective communicators regardless of whether or not they are stammering. Our key takeaways from today are, it's okay to stammer, but it's not okay to struggle with talking. The more we can help children to be okay with stammering, the more likely they are to stammer in an easy way or not at all. And stammering in an easy way l l like th th this gets in the way of communication so much less than stammering in a tense or hard way, getting stuck like this. Parents and teachers haven't caused a child to stammer. That's not anything you've done or not done. There are lots of factors that determine whether a child will stammer or not. The good news is that there are lots of ways that you can help to make it easier for children to talk. Teaching style can make a real difference to a child who stammers, not only in their experiences at school, but beyond. As an added bonus, things that will be helpful for a child who stammers will also be helpful for lots of other children in your class. We've got some facts about stammering. To start, stammering and stuttering mean the same thing. You might also hear speech therapists talk about disfluency, which also means the same thing as stammering and stuttering. About 8% of children will stammer at some point. That means 1 in 12 children or 2.5 children in the average class of 30 will stammer at some point. About 80% of children who stammer will stop stammering either on their own or with speech therapy. We can't predict with complete accuracy which children are going to carry on stammering and which children are going to stop. So we offer speech therapy based on how that individual child is presenting at that time. About 3% of children will continue to stammer into adulthood. That's based on some recent research in 2018 to 2019. And boys are more likely to continue to stammer than girls. As children, two boys stammer to every one girl. But among adults, that's a ratio of four to one. Four men stammer to every one woman who stammers. Stammering is primarily a neurological condition. What we mean by that is the wiring of the brain is slightly different in people who stammer. About 60 to 80% of People who stammer have a relative who stammers. Stammering does run in families, but that also means that 20 to 40% of people who stammer don't have any relatives who stammer. And genes are just one factor influencing whether a child or person stammers or not. Stammering usually starts between the ages of two and five. It can start later but it does often start when children begin to put words together into sentences or when they start using more complex language. Stammering can start really suddenly, overnight, or it can start more gradually. Both are completely normal and they don't indicate at all what the long-term outcome is likely to be. Stammering is highly variable. It can come and go, sometimes for days, weeks or months at a time, and it can change throughout the day. It often depends on the situation, particularly with young children, 
and everyone who stammers does so in their own unique way. And the impact on each individual and on each family also varies greatly. Let's think about what stammering is. Stammering is a neurological or brain-based condition that makes it physically hard to talk. Someone who stammers will repeat so R -r -r repeat or prolong, prolong, or get stuck on sounds or words. There might also be signs of visible tension as the person struggles to get the words out. Visible tension could look like increased muscle tension in the face, the neck, or the whole body. Some people who stammer also make extra body movements while trying to get their words out. That could look like fidgeting, it could be blinking, it could be head, body, all in movement. And people who stammer may also look away as they focus on getting the words out. Some children or people who stammer might have disrupted breathing. Maybe they gulp for air before talking or talk until they run out of air. Taking an exaggerated breath before speaking can happen when the child's been told to take a deep breath. Those are the outward signs of stammering and what can be less obvious are the psychological impacts of stammering, which we're going to talk about next. Stammering is not just about getting the words out. It can affect the child's well-being, their confidence and either their vocational or academic choices. They might start to decide which subjects they enjoy at school based on how much they need to talk or not in that subject. And they might start to think about what they want to do when they're older in terms of a job and that being influenced by how much they need to talk or not in different jobs. In terms of psychological impact, a child who stammers might become anxious or distressed or reluctant to speak. They might try to hide their stammer by changing words, by saying less or avoiding speaking situations altogether. For example, they might not want to talk in front of a group. They might experience feelings of shame, guilt, anger, anxiety, embarrassment, humiliation, sadness, frustration or helplessness and often they start to experience those negative feelings as a result of having other people reacting negatively to their stammer. We've got some examples of things that affect stammering. Children often stammer more when they're tired. That's a physical factor that affects fluency or stammering. There are also emotional factors, for example if they're excited, upset, they might stammer more. There are social factors, for example, if they're competing for attention or if they're interrupting, that often means that they'll stammer more. Then there are linguistic factors, such as answering questions. Questions can be linguistically quite complex and can make children stammer more. When children are using more complex language, they are often more likely to stammer, and similarly, when they're using new vocabulary or sentence structures. There's also time pressure. So rushing means that many children will stammer more. Children tend to stammer less when they're well rested, when they're feeling calm and confident in one-to-one -one situations, when they're responding to a comment rather than a question, when they're using simpler language and when they're taking their time with talking. This starts to give us some idea as to how we can support children with their talking. These are examples of thoughts and worries children might have about stammering. Children who stammer might worry about what others think of them. They might worry that people think that they're weird or stupid or there's something wrong with them. They might worry about how people will react, that people won't listen to them or will walk away or that people will laugh at them or talk about them behind their backs, or they won't want to talk to them or be friends with them. Children who stammer might think they're not good at talking.
They might even think that it's their fault that they're stammering. They might start to think of stammering as something that's bad and of themselves as being different to others. And they start to develop these thoughts and worries based on how other people are reacting and responding to them. When the consequences of stammering, either the actual consequences or the anticipated consequences of stammering are high, some children might cope by holding back from participating ver verbally in schools. They might not answer questions in class or ask questions. They might not volunteer to take speaking parts in plays or assemblies. They might not join in group discussions. They might say that they don't know the answer even when they do. They might say that they don't want to speak or read aloud. Particularly in front of the rest of the class, they might change words. They might use words that feel safer to them, that, that they know they can say without stammering. But they might not express what they actually want to say. They might give short or monosyllabic answers just to limit the amount that they are talking. We've got a couple more ways here that children might cope with stammering. They might decide not to join in with activities because they involve speaking. Those might be things that they would otherwise enjoy. They might be starting to make life choices because of stammering. And even quite young children do think about what they're going to do when they're older. And they might start thinking about choosing subjects or future careers that are going to involve less speaking. In some situations, behaviours that might appear appear uncooperative may actually be coping strategies for managing stammering. For example, not giving eye contact or not speaking or saying very little, that might actually be because they're trying to avoid stammering. Of course, everyone is different. Some children are confident, they don't worry about stammering. Stammering doesn't get in the way, they just get on with things. Other children do experience anxiety about speaking and that can be considerable anxiety about speaking and it does stop them from doing things they would like to do. Some children will appreciate you making adjustments and others won't want you to treat them in a different way. This needs to be very much approached on an individual basis and the best way to do that is to talk to the child themselves. What to do if a child in your class is stammering? The first thing to do is to consider what impact it's having on the child and how aware they are. Is it bothering the child or not? You might want to talk to the child's parents. Is it something they've noticed? Is it something they're concerned about? And you might want to talk to the child themselves, particularly if you suspect that they might be aware. You're aiming to talk to them in a sensitive and open way and asking what you can do to help them with their talking because too often stammering is, kind, is a kind of elephant in the room and children can grow up thinking there's something wrong or shameful for having a stammer and that it can't even be talked about. If either the child or the parents are concerned about stammering, you might want to make a referral to the speech and language therapy service. Contact details will be found on the final slide of this presentation. So how to talk to a child about stammering. Many adults who stammer say that they wish people had talked ab about it more with them when they were young. And talking about stammering can help reassure the child and prevent any anxiety around speaking from taking hold. It used to be thought that you shouldn't talk to children about stammering as it would make it worse, but we now know that's not the case. It's a good idea to talk openly with children about stammering, particularly once they're showing any signs of awareness. Very young children might not be aware, so take your cues from the child. These are things that you can say in the moment when a child is stammering. You can normalise it. You can say, we all get a bit stuck with our words sometimes. And you can acknowledge, that was a tricky word for you. And you can validate, 
it's annoying when our words don't come out, isn't it? And you can reassure, you're doing brilliantly, I'm listening. We want to avoid talking about stammering or speech as being good or bad, because this can make things worse in the long run. Although it won't directly make the child stammer more, it will affect their attitude towards their talking and their stammering. We want children to be confident communicators regardless of whether they stammer or not. We don't want to give them the message that stammering's bad. So even if we say their talking is good when they're not stammering, we're still implying that stammering is bad. What we want to do instead is use neutral language. We can talk about stammering more or stammering less. For example, he's stammering less at the moment. We can also talk about stammering being more or less noticeable. So for example, her stammer is more noticeable today. It's a good idea to use neutral language when you're talking to other adults as well as when you're talking to the children. How to help. How you respond is really important and it will help shape the child's perception of themselves. The strategies that I'm going to give you will help all children, not just those who are stammering. And the overall aim is to reduce any pressure that the child might feel while talking. You need to stay calm and try to slow down your own rate of speech. This will show all children in your class that there's plenty of time and they can take their time when talking. Many children are able to speak more easily when they have some extra processing time and slowing down your rates of speech slows the overall place of the conversation down, which usually helps fluency and gives extra time for those processes that are involved in talking. You can also put some pauses as a way of slowing down the overall pace of conversation and children will naturally copy our rates of speech. We don't need to say anything about it. In fact, don't ask the child who stammers to slow down or take a breath. Those things might work for a couple of minutes, but in the long run, it's more likely to add to negative thoughts and feelings about talking. And taking an extra breath can become part of the struggle to talk. Slowing down your rates of speech is, is a much more effective way to help a child take their time with talking and avoid giving children any advice about talking, including think about what you're going to say, calm down, take your time, any of those things. They might work for a couple of minutes, but then they're likely to add to the frustration and add things the child's got to think about, which might actually make it, them stammer more. Taking a deep breath not only adds to the things they've got to process, but also increases physical tension, which is the opposite of what we're trying to achieve and can become part of the struggle to talk. Ask one question at a time and give plenty of time to answer. Maybe reduce the number of questions that you ask. And if you need specific information, you could use choice questions. So, did it happen in the classroom or the playground? Are you telling me something about home or at nursery? Asking lots of questions can overload children and make them more likely to struggle with their talking. Asking one question at a time and really listening is likely to work much better. Here are a few more strategies for ways to help children who are stammering. You want to give the child plenty of time to say what they want to say and don't interrupt or finish their sentences. I think we'd all find it quite annoying if somebody finished our sentences. If you do that with a child who's stammering, you are risking getting it wrong and then you've got to start again, which is very frustrating. You also want to keep your language relatively simple, which can help avoid overextending a child's speech and language system. You're aiming to use language that's just a little bit more complex than the child is using themselves so that they can keep developing their language skills at the pace that's right for them. So we want to resist the temptation to show anxiety or to correct 
or fill in their speech. Instead, we want to try to make sure that everyone in the conversation gets a turn to speak. So you want all children, including those who stammer, to be able to take turns in conversations. While it's true that we shouldn't finish children's sentences for them or interrupt them when they're talking, at the same time, we don't want to let them interrupt us successively or let them do all the talking. That isn't helping them learn good communication skills. If you feel anxious when the child is stammering, just try not to show it. Stay calm and approachable. Listen to what the child is saying, not how they're saying it. Focus on their message. It's easy to focus on stammery, particularly if you're concerned about it. But that can mean that we're not really listening to what the child is telling us and we're missing out on the opportunities to build their communication skills. Pausing before answering questions is a good way of slowing the pace of conversation down and it also models taking time to think before talking. And children naturally copy this behaviour and it means that they give themselves the extra processing time that they need. Keeping natural eye contact lets the child know you're still listening and it encourages them to keep trying with their talking. I've got some ways of supporting children who stammer in the classroom. So answering the register can be really hard for children who stammer. Consider alternative ways of responding to the register which everyone can use so the child who stammers doesn't feel singled out. For example, you could allow a variety of responses though, so that they could say here, yes miss, a ma, present, or they could give non-verbal responses, so like put the hand up or stand up briefly. Reading aloud can also be really tricky for children who stammer, so it's a good idea to ask the child what works best for them. They might like to go first or be second or third. Waiting for your turn can really make the anticipation and tension build and the anxiety can build up. The child might like to read together with another child. Speaking in unison is more likely to be fluent and a bit easier. You can include speaking tasks in your lesson planning when a child's, child's likely to be more fluent. For example, road language like reciting the days of the week or counting. Kids are often more fluent when they sing and chant. So speaking familiar words with a strong rhythm like a nursery rhymes or poetry or chants can also be easier for the children who stammer. You need to be on the alert for any children teasing or bullying in the classroom or the playground. We know from research that children who stammer are more likely to be teased and bullied than children who don't stammer. And obviously that's not something that we want to be happening. As for any other child, we want to praise the child for things that they do well. That'll help with their self-esteem and confidence. And of course, it's important to praise the child who stammers for things that they do with good communication. We'll talk about that on the next slide. But it's also really important to praise children who stammer for things that are not related to communication at all. So it's really important that teachers and teaching staff praise children's talking regardless of whether they're stammering or not at the time. The aim is to build children's confidence and ensure that they have a positive self-image as a good talker and prevent them from from internalising the idea that they're not a good talker. We don't want to praise their level of fluency. We're looking to praise good communication. For example, we could say things like, thank you for sharing your wonderful ideas with us all. Wow, that is an excellent word to use. You're doing such good listening today. You explained that so clearly, well done. We've got some further information and resources. We've got three websites, all of which have pages for teachers. We've got Action for Stammering Children, the Michael Palin Centre for Stammering and Stammer. I can highly recommend you watch this video made by the Michael Palin Centre for Stammering. 
It's children and young people saying what they want teaching staff to know about stammering. It's called, wait, wait, I'm not finished yet. There's a 12 minute version and there's a 20 minute version. It features children of various ages sharing their experience of stammering and explaining how teaching staff can help. You can find it either on the Michael Palin Centre for Stammering website or you can search. I find it easily on YouTube as well. I can highly recommend you watch that one. I've got a few videos that you might find useful. Seven top tips for talking with a child who stutters. This is 15 minutes long. It's from the Stuttering Foundation and there are some therapists from the Michael Palin Centre talking about how to support children who stutter or stammer. There's a list of videos on stammer.org including Has your preschool child started stammering? Should I be worried about my preschool child stammering? Is it my fault my child stammering? And how to help parts one to five. These are aimed at parents of preschool children but definitely very relevant to teachers of nursery age and reception age children. They're all quite short videos, the total time is 30 minutes for all of them. Then there's a video by Steph Burgess about how stammering relates to speech and language development. That's about 20 minutes long. It goes through the communication chain and how it relates to stammering in young children. Then there's a playlist of videos by the South Tees NHS Therapy Service. It's called Fluency Stammering. That's the name of the playlist. There are two particularly relevant videos in there for teachers. There's one on practical advice to support children who might be stammering. That's 17 minutes. And there's one on why do some children stammer, eight minutes. And then there's Sam's poem, I Have a Stammer on YouTube which is three minutes long and it's young people aged five to 15 each reading a line from the poem I Have a Stammer by Sam who introduces the video. This is supported by the charity Stammer. That's the end of this information session. I hope you found it useful. If you have any questions then you can either contact your local speech and language therapist or you can contact the speech and language therapy department either by email or you can phone us. Thank you.